after you flush the toilet or you shower, water eventually gets recycled and discharged somewhere back into the environment in a cleaner state. But how does it get cleaned? Wastewater must be transported to a wastewater treatment facility where contaminants and nutrients are removed and pathogens are inactivated. How does this process work? There are different types of facilities that perform this function, including the two we're going to focus on in this video. While the end result is similar, the differences in the treatment processes give rise to various strengths and challenges. First, we're going to the community of Bosque Farms, New Mexico, where they have a conventional wastewater plant. In this community, each connection is equipped with a small tank outside the building that contains a special type of water pump called a grinder pump. A grinder pump shreds any debris in the wastewater as it pushes through the collection piping to the plant. At the plant, wastewater flows directly into the aeration basin. A series of large blowers blow air into each basin, which provides oxygen and is required to treat the wastewater. In a process called aerobic digestion, bacteria and other microorganisms are present and utilize oxygen to consume organic matter and reduce the nutrient content. After aerobic treatment, the wastewater flows to the clarifier, where solids settle at the bottom of the basin and floating contaminants will stay at the surface and be swept off by rotating rakes. This facility also uses sprinklers on the surface of the basins to break up any films that start to form. The solids are mixed with a polymer that causes the smaller particles to combine and form larger clumps called flocculent that can be separated more readily from the liquid water. The solids are dewatered using a filter press and then fall into a dumpster that acts as a drying bin to allow further drainage. Staff then transports the solid material to a landfill. Back at the clarifier, the cleaner water flows through triangular wares that circle the basin. Because this water still contains bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms, it must be disinfected before it can go back into the environment. To do this, water flows past a series of UV bulbs that shine a specific wavelength of light that inactivates the microorganisms so they cannot reproduce and will not be harmful to the environment. After the water has had most of its nutrients, contaminants, and microorganisms removed, it can now be safely reintroduced back into the environment to be used by other life forms and communities downstream. The Bosque Farms Wastewater Treatment Facility uses both an on-site laboratory and an external lab contractor to regularly test the wastewater at different sites along the treatment process for various characteristics, including pH, the amount and identity of organisms, and the quantity of nutrients in the water. Next, we go to Quemado, New Mexico, and take a look at their wastewater lagoons. Unlike Bosque Farms, which pumps wastewater through the collection system at the treatment facility, the town of Quemado has a gravity-fed collection system. Wastewater flows downhill into the single lift station at the treatment facility, where it then gets pumped up into the lagoons. Wastewater lagoons are much more passive with simpler operations and maintenance requirements than the conventional plants. However, similar to the conventional process, they also use naturally occurring microorganisms to remove nutrients and organic matter from the wastewater. There are different types of lagoons, with some involving the process of adding air by mechanical means and others relying on air being added naturally through the air-water interface. Lagoons are formed by earthen dikes that are aligned to prevent leakage. After wastewater is pumped into a lagoon, it settles into three layers. Waste is broken down in all three layers, but in different ways. The top layer is called the aerobic zone because oxygen is present and is used in the microbial process that breaks down nutrients and organic matter. The bottom layer is called the anaerobic zone where waste is much more dense and is broken down by organisms that thrive in an environment lacking oxygen. 
The zone between the aerobic and anaerobic zone is called the intermediate zone, and it contains many different types of organisms, some that use oxygen and some that don't. Many external factors play a role in the breakdown of waste. Wind, along with the mixer that is present in this lagoon, adds oxygen to the water and breaks up the layers of algae if they form. The sun provides energy to the algae and other photosynthesizing organisms. Photosynthesis adds oxygen to the water that is then used by other organisms. Unlike many systems, including Bosque Farms, that discharge their clean water into the environment, there is no discharge for Camado's lagoon system. Because of Camado's arid environment, water leaves the lagoons through evaporation. Because it is possible for lagoon liners to develop leaks, contaminated water can seep out of the lagoon and into the environment or groundwater. To detect if this happens, wastewater lagoons are equipped with a monitoring well and sampled regularly for signs that there may be a rupture. Although they look quite different, both conventional wastewater treatment plants and wastewater lagoons use the same method to remove nutrients and organic matter from wastewater. The organisms that are naturally present in the wastewater and the environment. Both types of treatment systems have advantages and disadvantages. Lagoons require less operations and maintenance, but require a large amount of space. Conventional wastewater treatment plants have a smaller footprint and treat larger amounts of flow. However, they require more personnel to operate and maintain. What type of wastewater treatment facility is used in your community?